it might be. It's actually $20,000, $41,000. Okay, folks, <coughs> it's time to call the meeting to order. Before we uh, get completely going, I've got a few housekeeping. Well, first, who would like to see the properties before us tonight? I was. You were? Anybody else? Okay. Mr. Hoy is the only one that did. Do uh, any of you feel you may need to recuse yourself tonight from any of the votes? No. If you change your mind, that's quite all right. Finally, did you speak with anyone regarding the variance requests before us? No. 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 All right. I would propose that we defer the election of officers and release that discussion until the end of the meeting. Yeah. Yes. That's fine. I'm sure it's all right with all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go right into it. Item right number one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, got two minutes first. I'll uh, entertain any motions regarding the minutes. Uh, we need to make a minor adjustment with respect to item three. It was listed as uh, unanimous or uh, as two and zero, right? Uh, and the vote was actually three and zero for denial. <coughs> Maria Mendez. Oh, Paul's got to know that. Any other changes to the minutes? No, no, no. Motion will be in order. Make a motion to approve the minutes. I'll second it. And that's to approve the minutes as amended. <coughs> all right, all in favor? Aye. 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 Now we can get to the <coughs> easies. Scott and Barb Easy, I believe. Yes. Scott is. Scott, could you care to come forward and present your case? Sure. You have a driveway you'd like to watch. Yeah, I'm just requesting, and I don't know if this picture will help at all, but this is the property on Classic Drive. And I'm asking to widen the drive because the, the plan is to add a third stall. Um, and I've talked to a little my neighbors, I don't know if you have as well, and they've all um, agreed that it's more than acceptable for them because <coughs> I've got a, a covered trailer in the construction business as well. And my intent is to get it inside to try to keep things a little bit cleaner and neater on there as well. And it would be a little bit easier, obviously, to get in and out of that stall or park on the side of the garage with that wire drive. My, church, my um, neighbor to the Right side of me, feet from the street, came to me tonight. He has a, a wider drive, and a neighbor across the street does as well. So, from an aesthetic standpoint, they felt it would fit fine and look, look well with everything else on that small street. Mm -hmm. It's a very short street. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed from the aerial view that your neighbors, a couple of your neighbors, have the same kind of thing. Yeah. So the situation you found yourself with is is you need more room. You need you you would like to widen your garage. In doing that, you'd like to widen the drive. <coughs> Correct. Okay. And that's uh, one of the off one of the things you're proposing as a way to offset this, uh, or to uh, emphasize the need for the variance, is that you could cover up things that perhaps aren't as well covered now. Correct. I have two trailers actually. So one's back by the shed, and the other one sits on the side of the house all the time. And, right. Um, being from the construction side as well, I guess, you know, it's nice when people don't have too much parked outside. Okay. Questions? So with respect to the stall for the garage, that's going to go where the gravel is now? Where Correct. The cover trail is parked now? Yeah. So if you saw that, the, yeah, exactly. Right there. Yeah, that doesn't That show doesn't show it, no. I yeah. didn't even think to take a recent picture. I just happened to have this one on my Facebook page. Okay, so for your general edification, as you're looking at this picture, to the left of the garage is where he wants plans to extend the garage. Mm -hmm. In here. Correct. Yep. Yeah, there's a pretty substantial setback um, there between our existing building and our neighbor. So there's plenty of room for the wider garage. We still have probably close to 15 feet of setback left. And Paul, the issue here is the wider driveway, and that's it? Correct. Yes. Further questions? Tom, you agree? Okay, okay, sir, if you could have your seat, uh, okay. we'll, we'll deliberate. Yeah, mm -hmm. Would you care to speak, Alderman Dorf? Yeah, thank you. Yes, I would just say that I, I'm in support of this, and I hope that you will give this consideration for him to widen his driveway. All thank right. you. Thank you. 
What do you think, gentlemen? I think he makes a good point that it's a consistent truth for expanded driveways in the area. He and does have a pretty large lot. So are we allowed to hear any of this? Yeah, <coughs> you sure are. Yeah. I think we should get some microphones assist them in this. It's meeting after meeting, you can never hear anybody talking to themselves. You know, we're here part of the community and we can't hear, we're, okay. we're like uninvolved. I'll speak up, sir. We'll I think we up. need to get a speakers and know? microphones. Okay. It's a really good idea. idea. Otherwise, it's a good idea. It ends I mean, up us mumbling and you guys trying to. What are we to here for? Saying, you know? Right, sure. Okay, based on what I've seen yeah. in the neighborhood, uh, there are a series of properties with expanded driveways. Uh, he has a, he does have a large lot, and there is enough uh, room between him and his neighbor. It's not going to be any kind of a burden. Okay, that's good. That's right. kind of my thought too with the setback. The setbacks are already pretty significant, and given what he has in terms of trailers, uh, the neighbors aren't opposed apparently. So. I'd be in favor of it. All right. I agree. All right. And we're in violent agreement as usual. <laughs> I make a motion to approve the variance as requested. Sir, did you want to speak? Is this, this is this according to ordinance? The city ordinances is as far as size and he's proposing to get a variance from the city ordinance. That's what we're here to discuss. Well, you know, we can't keep on giving variances for everything. We've got people duplexes parking. They got driveways poured halfway across the lawn now. This is on Edgewood, okay? I'm speaking. And there's vehicles parked in front of the front entrance doors. How's an emergency vehicle? I mean, this is, the Green Bay's turning into a parking lot for homes. It's getting ridiculous. If you have a business and you have that many vehicles, you should be in a business area and build garages and driveways big enough for your equipment. Are you speaking You shouldn't be running a business out of your are house. Are you speaking against the variance that's been requested for us on this? Item? I'm speaking against an overabundance. <clears throat> we have laws and we have, what did I just say before? Ordinances in the city are here to protect us <coughs> from overcrowding junking up neighborhoods, oversized driveways, driveways running into the front lawns. <coughs> it's, it's looking like like a junkyard around Green Bay. Take a ride down Edgewood, all the duplexes. Now they're all they're all pouring driveways over more than half their front lawn. And they're storing crap out there. A bunch of it. Yeah. You're, uh, you know, and, and if this isn't within ordinance, we gotta quit banning ordinances, period. I mean it's gotta stop somewhere. We, we do need your name and your address for the meeting minutes, sir. We do need your name and address for the meeting minutes. It's on the card. Steve Seymour. You're here particularly to speak against item number 10 or for item number 10. Can't hear you. <clears throat> We've made note of your comments, sir. I'm here speaking against any ordinance violations at all in Green Bay. they got to stop. And we got to stop making leadways for other people because if you gave this clearance to everybody, there would be no green grasses left in the six front yards of Green Bay anymore. Good. Well, I appreciate your comments, sir. Further discussion, gentlemen? Then we have the lead. We had a motion. Yeah. We, we have a motion to approve the variance as requested. So we have a motion made by Mr. Boyd to approve the variance. Do we have a second for yep. Mr. Everman? Further discussion? Um, All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. You have your variance. Thank you. Appreciate it. Item number two. We want, we want to talk to the uh, redevelopment authority, Mr. Pappy. Pappy. Right. Thank you. Bill Pappy, I'm the redevelopment manager for the city of Green Bay. Uh, redevelopment authority acquired this property uh, from uh, Brown County via property tax foreclosure 435 New Wall. Um, we're going to be doing a uh, rehab of the property. Um, part of the rehab that we're going to do is the garage, um, the foundation on the garage. 
um, is pad. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove um, the, uh, the, the garage structure that's attached, re um, redo the foundation on the garage, and then reconstruct it in a similar format. So it will be a uh, flat roof, same, uh, same style, just needs to be removed so we can properly repair and replace the foundation that's bad on it. But in doing so, you're going to need a variance for the side side setback. Yep. And it's two two inches. Is that correct? I believe so. Yeah. The, the gentleman that wrote the specs is in here, but I believe you're that's correct. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be in the same footprint. Yeah. Side guard three feet. This one's two feet ten inches. Correct. We're on the same page. They're the going inches. over. They have an existing garage now. Yep. That is part of the rehab yep. of the property. Right. And they're going to put a new one there. So right. to do that, they need a variance request. Right. The variance request is that the side guard is three feet, and when they put the new one, it's going to be two feet ten inches. Is that right, Paul? It's a story. You're talking about the side guard <laughs> setback. Correct. Yeah. So it's if that's the variance that's being right. Two so inches. It's, it's an attached garage, and it's a story and a half, I guess I might call it. So it's an eight foot side guard setback. So it's quite a it's quite a a bit of variance, but obviously the existing one that was there before mm -hmm. violated as well. Is it basically just going in the same location? Yeah. Yep. But in order to properly repair the foundation, we need to take the garage off to, to do it right. Yeah. It's going to be a I think a ninety thousand dollar rehab on the on the home. So um, in order to to get it up to code because we're using block grant funds in order to do so. Um, so we need to make sure that all of our, you know, all the components are up to all the HUDS regulations and standards and mm -hmm. stuff. So we want to make sure that it's done right so the foundation is, was an issue that came up during our specs and we need to replace it the right way, but unfortunately it's going <coughs> to take care of the garage. So. Okay. Any discussion or further questions? All right. If you can have a seat, sir. I don't know about this. This seems pretty. Good. No, it's pretty sure. I mean, you're just replacing what already exists. Right. Making right. it better. Yep. Making it better. <coughs> it's already a small garage. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> a pretty small lot. Yeah. So, a motion to approve both the variants. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made by Mr. Herman, second by Mr. Hoy to approve the variance request before us for item number two as presented to us. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. He's good. Thank you. Mr. McGrath. McGrath. McGrath Sr. Yes. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, fellow board members. Yes. Good evening. My name is Jim McGrath Sr. I live at 1137 Thornhill Street in Green Bay. I'm a lifelong resident of Green Bay. Except for my military <coughs> service time, the United States Air Force is a pair of rescue men, rescue people. I've lived my current address for 45 years since I came out of service. I was happily married to my first wife for 40 years before she passed away in cancer in 2009. I just recently got remarried <coughs> to another <coughs> lovely lady who also has a seven in her number. And I went back to using two cars again. And I have 22 medical problems that the VA treats me for. And one of them is chronic lymphedema, <coughs> lower abdomen, both of my legs. I have heart conditions. I have chronic kidney disease. I have my medical records here if you wish to see them. And I like to widen my driveway to the property line. And in support of my request, I have a written <coughs> original copy letter from my next door neighbor, the adjacent property line, Jim and Jane Wusenkraft, who have been my neighbors for 37 years. Would you like me to read a letter? Or would you like to read it, please? Um, well, we, we understand that was this was going to be one of our requests to okay. understand what the Wusenkrafts felt. Yes, so and that'll be my question. You're, you're offering us a letter which will go into the record, okay, um, conveying their their agreement with what yes. you're supposed to. Yes, and uh, uh, we've been friends, fellow veterans, for 37 years, and we discussed it, and they're they're totally supportive of it. I'm redoing my entire lawn next spring. I'm ripping it out, redoing it, and I'm going to pitch for the end of the concrete, ends of the property line. We're going to make sure that drainage will go towards the road, and not towards his backyard, and it states that in the letter. <coughs> so we've, he's, and he also, his driveway is double wide. A lot of my neighbors in our street are double wide driveways. Her cars move back and forth. My garage door is not normal width, so it's, every time we have to move a car, we're, we have to put a car away, and it's, I'm getting older, 
Uh, when I redo the, the concrete, I'm putting new studs on my on my house, put railings uh, like they do at Lambo Field, the handicap railings, and decreasing my risers from nine inches and higher back to six inches if I can do the steps, because it's it's becoming difficult for me. So that's the reason for the request for the variance. And all my neighbors, I've said, <coughs> everybody, especially my neighbor, and I made the map for you, mm -hmm. and uh, these, they're, they're for it. They have the, they have no problem with it. So I'd like to, hopefully the board will approve my request for variance and the concrete will be poured by uh, Joe Main on the contractors in Green Bay. And I applied for the permit for this <coughs> to do it. And I actually had the permit handed to me by the inspection department before they realized that it was going to the property line. And I politely gave it, gave it back to them. And I said, I'm going to go to the procedure you need to go through. I actually had a permit in my hand signed. Okay. I gave it back because it wasn't the right way to do it. Well, I appreciate your, your enthusiasm for our process. So you're proposing the variance you need is to go all the way to the property line. You're yes. going to widen your driveway all the way to the property line. Yes, we're going to two cars. You know, we don't have to manipulate every time we want to do something. Right. And, uh, and I'm pitching it for when I pitch it, I'm going to pitch it for the water to the going off towards their property at 1133. I'm going to pitch it for it comes down. But the old driveway down to the roadway. Okay. Because we do have, we just had the rain the other day and we do have water problems for the low street coming off Lambeau Field and another street. Everything rolls down Thornhill Street. It gets to gross, there's nowhere for it to go. So I'm very knowledgeable about the water and I'm also going to help Jim actually remove some of the water in his backyard because <coughs> there's a pine tree right there and the water stays in his backyard. I'm going to push, I'm going to taper his entire side of the lawn to the road from his house to the end of my the new driveway if you approve it. So he's actually thankful that he's going to get some benefit of it. And yeah. I'm paying for it and he's okay. They are okay with it. Okay. And we're good neighbors. Mm -hmm. And they're willing to say yes. Yes. And I think that's very important. Yeah, that's good. So thank you for your time. And I hope Before you, you leave, is there sure. any questions of the applicant here? Yes, sir. Thank you for your okay, time. You sure. <coughs> your discussion, gentlemen? Yeah. Uh, let me pick that one up, Paul. When I drove the neighborhood, this uh, configuration of going to the property line and going this way with the driveway is consistent with the neighborhood. It's at 1109, it's at 1118, 1126, and 1123. And that's when I stopped writing down the numbers. <laughs> so, all right. So, you know, it's consistent with the neighborhood. I think uh, also we should take into consideration that this is a medical hardship. Yes. With respect to moving vehicles. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I don't have a problem with this. I think it's a good idea, in fact. It's a great idea. Clearly a hardship. Yes. For the medical reasons, so right. I'm in favor of it. All right. Make a motion to approve the variance request as requested. I'll second that. Okay, <coughs> Mr. Hoy has made the motion that we approve the uh, request for the McGrath property on the <coughs> <Saturday> street. <coughs> Mr. Babcock has seconded it. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you for you allowing me to take up some of your time. Yep. Thanks for coming Thanks. in. Okay, we'll go to number four. <coughs> Let's see, this one is for the signs, right? Yes, I'm Nick with Jones Sign Company representing Paper Converting Machine yep. Northern Engraving on Coffin Drive. What they want to do, the object here is to get people going to the Converting Solutions Lab to go to the lab instead of going into the main entrance to their offices, Northern Engraving. All they want to do is identify that entrance which is located on the side of the building. The ordinance is you can't have any signage on the side of the building. It's only on the building front. So what we're asking for. Okay. And that's that's the long and the short of it? One too many signs on the building? Well, in the industrial district, you can't, uh, you need to have street fronting signage. And this is considered more of a directional sign. Uh -huh. But it's, it exceeds the six square feet that's allowed. So. The what is the sign facing? 
like if I'm looking at the building from the science point of view, what am I seeing? Well, there's actually, that's kind of an old satellite view there. There's, there's now a road, see the parking lot there with the few cars in it to the left uh -huh. of the building? Yep. There's actually a road that they built that goes to the left there and then around the back. And you can see it. You can see this from the edge of the parking parking lot. So when they come in, they'll be able to see that converting solutions lab entrance. That's the whole idea behind it. Yeah, this is a pretty big facility. Yeah. Okay, I mean, you drive up and there's a question mark on where do I go from here. So I think it'd be beneficial both for the business as well as the customers to have the additional uh, visual direction of what to do with everything yeah. else. Seems to make sense. That's <coughs> the purpose of the sign to be. Mm -hmm. And if I'm, I'm understanding correctly, it goes on the front of that, that portion right here in that front of that parking lot? Is that nope. correct? Towards the back. On the other end. It's going to go on the other end. This side? Other side, but on the other end. Right here. Yep. yep. Okay. Exactly. Yep. Yeah, I mean, I have no issues with this. It's not facing someone's house. It's facing another, you know, warehouse. So it's mm -hmm. literally just helping people get around the parking lot. It's not impeding on anybody's view of Yeah, you can have a seat, sir. I think, I think we're Thanks. Anyway, sorry. My yeah. discussion started. <laughs> no, that's, that's fine. Yeah, I agree. I, we've had this discussion before with signs. If it's pretty much if it's reasonable, it's reasonable. I'll make a motion to approve the variance. A second. Okay, a motion made by Mr. Babcock, seconded by Mr. Everman to approve the variance requested for the sign of paper converting. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. Thank you. You're good. Okay, Mr. Pappas, out on Wisconsin Avenue. Correct. I'm assuming you guys have read what I said. I don't know if you're oh, yeah. or not. But, oh, yeah. Uh, what I have, I've got a large garden, large lot, and a little storage shed. I have a deck where I store all my crap under the deck. In the back of my garage, my snow lords, I bought ramps, my garden tillers stuck in a corner, etc., etc., etc. And I have plenty of property, as you probably have noticed on the well, there's my, yeah, I'm on the corner, corner of East Shore in, in Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. My lot's 100 feet wide, 350 feet deep approximately. A lot of trees for concealment, etc. All this garden equipment and no place to get at it comfortably. I'd like to propose to put a shed in there, and it exceeds the limit of the size of the shed that we're allowed. My garage is undersized for what I'm allowed, but my shed is undersized. <laughs> so if I could put this this new addition on the garage, I'd be in, in focus, but putting it out there by itself with attaching it to my other shed. Creating hardship by just running all over the place and getting equipment to check it. And, uh, and uh, I, here's the shed I want to put up. Just a little. Now are you going to replace the shed that's there? No, or I'm going to attach it. You're going to attach one. that on it. It will still really have one shed. It would still be one shed, only it would be now 260 square feet. Instead of adding 100, I'm adding 180, this is 180, by my 8 by 10, which is 80, 50, 60. So, we all one spot. I don't know what you, you know, like I said, there's the Google view of the, the property, and uh, have plenty of property. You can't even see the shed on there now because of all the overhead trees, etc. So it's, uh, it would be well concealed, um, other than from Wisconsin and uh, There's my yard, I got plenty of yard. Mm -hmm. um, and this is what I'm covering up. Right now I got a, I got a yeah, four by one torn down on it. It's close. Where that is, that's where the shed's gonna go. Yeah. <laughs> so you see what I'm replacing? Yes. And that should give me plenty of room to, you like to build a shed, you've got a lot of stuff, you want to put it in the shed, yeah. people don't have to look at that, That's and right. unfortunately it's too big, yeah. at least the way the city looks at it. That's right. That's right. And originally, and I know it's all one property now, it used to be four separate lots that I built on, four right. separate city yeah. lots. I think that showed up on what Paul put up there first. Yeah, and that's the post. So. Yeah. 
all that property in a for a separate property. I have no issues. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> but, uh, anyway, I got my neighbor's approval next door to me. To my immediate left, I got a letter in here from my neighbor across the street. Did you send him a letter? He's in full concurrence. He's the one that looks at that stuff. But it's all, you know, ready to go if all I need is approval. All right. <coughs> Questions for the applicant? If you could have a seat, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So is the city considering it still two or? Well, I'd be treated as one structure, I guess, if it's physically connected together, I guess. So he's allowed to have one, but oh, he's got a detached garage. If you're right. So the so second one can be 100 square feet. 150. 150. And he's, okay. he's well above that. Garage were attached, this wouldn't be a problem, right? Uh, correct. We still would add up the garage, uh, all the accessory use, and see if it's less than the principal use. But from that one perspective, yes, you allow it up to a thousand square feet. Okay, what do you think, guys? I'll give the location of where it's at and what you'd like to do. Seems to me like it's going to be an improvement. <coughs> the property is going to be concealed and it's got the neighbors in support of it. So I'd be in favor of it. Yeah, I am too. This, this is kind of one of those deals where it's certainly a convenience that we're granting a variance on. But on the other hand, um, one of his pictures, we were certainly persuaded that perhaps there's reason to put this stuff in a shed. So, right. He's got concurrence from all his neighbors, so I can't really fault what he's proposing to do. From what I saw of the property, the uh, landscaping is just excellent. So I have a lot of confidence that however he constructs his, his building, it's going to fit in really well with the rest of the property. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> Do I have a concurrence again? We need a motion. I'll make a motion to uh, approve the variance requested. A second. Okay, Mr. Babcock has made a motion that we approve the Pappas variance request on Wisconsin Avenue. Mr. Hoy has seconded it. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Four zero. You're good. Thank you very much. So what do you think, Paul? Should we consider the next two together? That's up, up to you. They are next to, next door to each other. They're, they're so basically providing the same. You'll have to have separate votes at first, but uh, it's up to you and how you want to hear the items. Yeah, uh, Yeah, let's do that. So we'll have item six and seven, the thirteen fifteen and thirteen oh seven. Basically, what you're proposing is the same project. So yes, if you sir. guys could explain that for us, for why you want to do what you're doing and what you're going to do. Um, my wife and I own the house at thirteen fifteen Oregon Street. What we were proposed, we have a very very small one cell garage on the house, and of course, there's two of us. We do have two vehicles. Yeah. Um, to be able to, what we originally wanted to do is widen the driveway. And when we thought about doing that, I was talking to my neighbor, Tom, and he was thinking about doing the same thing on the other side. We're gonna be putting a new fence in the backyard, hopefully yet this year, if not in spring. Mm -hmm. So with that little bit of green space that would be left alongside the garage, I just wanted to uh, be able to run the concrete all the way back to the fence would be at should be at the back of the garage. We also have a small pop-up camper that we'd like to put alongside the building rather than have it out in front of the house, of course. And uh, I know Tom has a like a real small fishing boat that would fit on the other side right there. So he wanted to do the same thing and it just kind of cleans it up and make it, make, make it look a little nicer and nobody's got any stuff sitting out front of the house. And he's got an extra you know, space to park our other vehicle. And on the, the drawings weren't there, but the plan would be then obviously to do that also. There's green space 
um, still in the front there. Uh, it wouldn't be it wouldn't be concrete all the way to the curb. It would be the to the sidewalk. Can I go up the point? Yeah, that would yeah. Be yeah. Sort of yeah. the idea. Uh, so our, our thinking here was, excuse me, is that this would kind of these would angle back up to the I think five, it's feet, five feet. feet. Ooh, no, it's a screen. But so that this front piece is not all concrete; it's still green space. And then speak up a little bit so somebody can hear you. Oh, sorry, sir. This will be angled back. The concrete would be angled back, so there's still green space up front, with us being able to then come in to the sides. Uh, the other problem, and the reason we want to do this, is because seven, eight years ago, I had a single stone crotch also stayed within my lines. But as you can see, neither myself or Chad have opportunity to enter the backyard. Um, well, I do actually have a door in the back, but Chad's somewhat landlocked here, so this gives him an opportunity, I think, to capitalize in some of that space. So you're really not creating a joint driveway. You're creating a joint project between your properties, but you're trying to retain the idea of separate driveways, and you're actually going to include, in, uh, include the green space so that it's clear that there's still two driveways. They just haven't come together. Correct. How have you thought about the water? You've got a nice swale there now. So is that going to be an issue? When when the if if the concrete goes all the way back to the garage, it'll, it'll be it'll be pitched out from the from the property line to towards the front and out towards our driveways. Right. Could you show me how you're going to do that? Because that's my photo. <coughs> and one of the things I picked up on was you've got a gutter on each each of the garages. Yeah, there and is here. We already got standing water here, so you're kind of going to go like that. Well, with our with the uh, driveway, you mean, or with with the green space? Yeah, the the with, with the property line being, it's not really centered. It's over here. Okay. That Tom would come from his corner here and go five feet up to the property line, as would we. So you'd have this front front green space there. So it would still be two separate driveways with the green space in the front. But yet they would join in the middle to go all the way back, so there is, you don't have you know, a little strip of odd looking green space or anything in between the two driveways. With the very little space we have here, it just makes more sense for us, if possible, to join them together and then we both can use that respective space rather than, you know, staying uh, three feet away and we can't really use any of that space on the side of the house at all. Look how small it is. Yeah, they got no choices here with the water. Just use your downspout from this guy and the one from that guy. Well, the one, is the one in the back beyond where the concrete is going to go? Yes. Yes. Okay. I think he's proposing, Tom, to have it actually pitched our direction. Yeah. yeah. This spot would, either, would be changed and it would, ha it would have to come out this way and Tom would have to, have to pretty much do the same thing. To, and then the concrete itself would be pitched towards the, towards the road. The water problems that develop are their own problems. So it isn't as if, at least as I read it, maybe somebody else has a different opinion. You know, any water problem created would be just for you guys and not for anybody else. Yeah. Yes, sir. Can I see somebody who wants you to make an ordinance change? No. For him. No, he's asking for a variance from a variance, the existing whatever. ordinance. But he's also against two city ordinances right now, violating two of them already. And he's asking to be able to do more stuff. The garbage can is, should not be visible from the road. We're supposed to be in your garage or in the center of your house in the back or behind a fence, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Any time a garbage can is visible, and also that trailer is not according to code either. Are you, speaking, are you speaking against this variance, sir? I, I I'm appreciate speaking, your why concern. do you want to give some variance since it's already going against two coordinates in the city already? No, that's what we're here for. Yeah, right. Yes. I'm, I'm speaking this. against it. The reason you're taking away green space. The reason I'm doing it, sir, you're, you're you're saying because my garbage cans are are visible from the road and the camper is is not legal right now. It's not correct? legal. That's why I'm asking for the variance to widen the driveway. Then my camper will be legal because it'll be on concrete and my new fence that's going up this fall. My garbage cans will be behind. Well, my here's fence my other side. thing. You're going. You want to change an ordinance. I have a 21 foot board. Not an ordinance. I'm just asking well, you want a variance. I have a 21 foot board. I don't need to have a discussion. Construction trailer. I pay so rental you can, fees you to can park my. To us. I pay rental fees to park my toys and construction vehicles in a private lot. 
I pay so that I don't junk up the city and go ask for ordinance changes, go against ordinances, violations. <laughs> There's two violations right there. You know, and all the guys asking for permission to change for something else. That's true. You know, you can find well, a place, and you can you can speak? rent a place to put yes, a trailer sir, we have a, or we a boat. Have, we understand your concern. Mr. Alder, would you care to speak? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm the alderman in this area, and I, I've driven by this area quite a few times, and I don't have a, a tremendous issue with that. We, this is a Board of Appeals meeting, and Board of Appeals will grant occasionally the opportunity to, to do something in that order. Every ordinance will not cover every, every point, but in a case like this where both neighbors are working together on this, I don't have a tremendous issue with that. I think my biggest concern would be to make sure that the drainage would come toward the road. And if that if that would be a stipulation that that would be put in there, I would be I would be fine with that. Yeah. Thank you. So if everybody in Green Bay filed against this, you have to talk to the board. So if everybody in Green Bay wanted to change your zoning issues, whatever you want to do here, and so now we got there's you're going to lose all the green space in Green Bay. You know, we can't keep on changing things for one or two people. That's when, it, when there's other ways of finding a place to put your camper. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't care to argue with you, sir, but that's what we're here for. Right. And I understand so that's what you're here for, but you got to understand, you can't keep on granting that stuff. That if you granted one person, you got to grant them the next, and next, and next, and next, and it's getting it ridiculous. to somebody else, sir, because it's our decision to make, not yours. I think that's the thing to keep in mind. Like, I appreciate your opinion coming in, all that stuff, but there's an assumption being made that we say yes to everything. We consider every single thing individually every single time. We consider what we've done in the past, how this impacts these different people, our neighbors working together, all these different things. So it's not like I think the assumption you're making it, that is making me a little uncomfortable with your argument is that if we make a decision for this one person that we're changing all of Green Bay. We're, we're making everything on individual basis. Last right. week there was something that came up and they voted no to it. I, you know, I was here the month they before. They don't have no these ordinances and variances for the city yep. for a reason, for right. people to stand by. And if they don't like it, move into a bigger neighborhood, get a bigger house, get a bigger yard. Move. I think you're making extreme arguments for case-by-case -case situations. No, it's, it's ridiculous. These are, these but I think laws are made to be followed. Well, I think so I'm late right. for work, I can drive 100 miles an hour and 25 miles an hour. That's okay. You're not even arguing the same point now. You're Thank you. It's just, it's just a difference. You're, all, you're trying to bend the rules for it. You're, you're talking about speeding versus a, a driveway. Do now. we have any further questions of the two applicants? No. no. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Great. Thank we'll you. Look into this. Excuse me? That was very rude of him. He called you guys yo yo's. That was rude. We were called no, 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 that's rudeness. We weren't raised to be rude in this, in this city. So, what do you, did you have a comment, Paul? Well, uh, maybe. Not, and not to complicate matters, but um, because of the proximity of the homes and basically joining these driveways together, there's no separation. And there's a lot line that's there, uh, but it's going to be blurred because it's going to be concrete. So, with the current owners on each side they seem to get along pretty well we're working on this joint where the problem is what next year or five years ten years when sell, someone sells the property there's going to be this loss of uh, compatibleness or I guess um, I don't know if legally they should be doing something that protects both interests and protects the city's interest because it could be considered trespassing issues in the future so there is on the surface granting variance is very straightforward but in this case because they're doing these projects together, it's kind of complicated matter where it's they're, they're kind of joined at the hip, so to speak. Well, they're, and they're we're almost kind of condoning the sharedness of the property that that's not for us to grant, it's for them to seek between each other. So, I don't know if that's clear or if it complicates it more. But Could I comment on that again? Okay, first of all, could I say something? Senior, just some, I'm trying to bring some logic into this. If they pour the concrete, what I would have them do is when the concrete's poured, they have the property line that's the way have the split of the concrete right there. That's the way it would be. It would be separated. That would be officially. That's separately. the way they're proposing it. There's yeah, two good. Yeah. We have a so it would be the, the property right. line would be visible on top right. of the concrete. We'd be paying for our own respectively, and that's right. 
Yeah, I think I think that the distinction is clear, especially because they have kept the green space and the right. but there's there's no barrier. At some point that green space acts as a barrier between the properties and you're if you remove that then that's okay I guess, but then that may cause future trespassing issues. Again, that may be more of a civil matter, but I think you should just be aware of by creating these two projects that are becoming long license. Well, that's a good point. I I, uh, I still think what they're proposing to do is more help than harm. I think they're trying to make make the dis make the distinction between the properties, and I really don't have a problem with the permit. I'm not trying to cause more work for the applicant, but I would almost suggest that they have some sort of shared easement or something that's understood about access there. Again, that's, it'll be up to you to decide if that's something you want to include in a motion or if you feel comfortable as it's proposed. Yeah, I, I, did, did you guys care to comment on either of those questions? Um, I, I don't. I, yeah, no, I don't if necessary, they could even put a fence up between them if they got mad at each other and they'd still be able to see where the line was. <laughs> right. And they could do that now. And what they're proposing to do is a more efficient use of that space than the way it exists right now. Right? And I wouldn't disagree with that at all, but now the line is blurred. It's because it's one, you know, where is the property line? It's not defined anymore. It was somewhat defined by the topography or by some other feature or the green space. Can we make it a condition that they have an evening? Well, that's something you, you could ask them and explore, I guess. Again, I'm not here looking to cause more issues for the applicant, but to protect everybody's interests in the future and the cities, because if there is a complaint, the city will take it in and have to address you know, part of those issues. You could make a condition that they seek, that they recommend they seek an easement or work together for an easement. And then that would cover future owners potentially. So you don't think that what we're proposing to do by simply granting two separate variances would be sufficient? He's talking about future problems. Yeah. I think that may be a way to avoid it between any future owners. Yeah, we can't sort of always anticipate future issues. I'm just, oh, yeah, I understand. It's just food for thought if that's something you want to We talked about it that way before, that we were yeah. concerned about the future. I mean, that was my concern was today everything's great. Someone moves, someone sells. It's not. It's now a shared space. Right. <coughs> Good yes, sir. Um, one of the, I guess, one of the things I was thinking about is, is that you know part of it is maintenance and things. Could they just put a construction joint where there's actually two separated slabs or a saw joint where you know a through saw joint so you can that's the one without the other, completely yeah. without impacting the other. And that's and that's what Chad and I have talked about, and we talked about clearly defining the line. If you looked at that picture right now, you'd think that somewhat that drainage ditch area is kind of the property line, which it is not. So it's really a false advertisement there of that picture. And really, when we put this in, it's designed because not only is it going to be cosmetically correct for appearance uh, for curb appeal, but that line would be clearly drawn, which would follow basically right back. If you look to, our fence board. to the back, is the fence line. So that that definition of those two slabs, in theory would be defined along the line of the fence line. So you should be able to stand on the sidewalk there, looking uh, to the south, and look right down the crack of the concrete and right down the fence line, clearly defining the two properties. Yeah, I agree. What you're proposing, Paul, is a more formal agreement that would be attached to the property records with the city? Is that what right, so that would be a legal document that would be recorded with each deed. So when someone buys a property, they understand that there was a variance granted, and in addition to that, there's some sort of agreement that they can cross the property legally. They have some rights or yeah. shared access, potentially. We've got shared driveways in Astor Park, where two neighbors are shared. Yeah, that's very common. So it's My house. nothing new. Is that way? Yeah, but what I think what Paul is saying is that that's not just between the two of them. I mean, that's not just an informal thing, it's a formal agreement. The formal easement, and I'm looking to my counselor on the right to kind of provide some guidance. But well, it would be something that the successors would be party to, too. Yeah, you know. yeah. Which so. implicitly our variances are, but. Right. Okay, we, we can condition um, any, any variance approval. That's 
That's clearly in the ordinance. Up to you. I'll make a motion to approve the variance conditioned upon uh, a shared easement between the property owners and any successors to the ownership of the property. A second motion. Okay, do you guys understand the the uh, motion that Mr. Babcock has made? Not entirely how it works. I know what he is saying that for the future, for future buyers or whatever, there be that with the deed saying this is where your, your property is and you share that. Well, I think it, what it would be is that you'd each have it'd be shared rights to the, that area, right? That, so there's no trespassing. Right. But if we're, I'm sorry to interrupt, but if we're using a clear defining visual line to separate those properties, and the variances are approved to break to bring the concrete to the property line. I, I, I'm just I'm, I'm trying to understand how that becomes shared property. I mean, I know what Chad wants to do, and he knows what I want to do. And it well, I guess the future owners might not know what you know. I mean, unless there's something spelled out. I think that's what. Yeah, or or there's some physical <laughs> barrier that's right. like a fence or something right. that's understood that you can't go across on that person's property. Right. It, it, and I can I can understand that, but if I was if, if the property was the same as it is right now, and I'm standing on a curb and I'm looking down between the houses, I'm, I'm pretty clear. Even if I was a if I was looking to purchase this property, uh, which I'm on the left, but if I was looking to purchase that property today, I, I could take that view and I have a very good understanding of the property line. And I'm, I'm I think what they're getting at is once you put concrete down, you put trailers, and you create ways to go in and out that you're going to impede on maybe a future he sells his house and a future neighbor doesn't like the fact that there's a shared way going through and you're now impeding on his lot line with storage or anything like that it's it's not making any sense long term even if there's a crack in the line so it's not necessarily you guys are willing to work together you guys get it all that stuff moving forward what he's saying is there needs to be something in writing so that's something for the future homeowner or something saying that you have to understand that he's going to be on your property on that side. Correct. At some time or another. Yeah, correct. Okay, I see your I point. Well, I think you're I marrying the two together with the pavement. <coughs> it's unique in the sense that sometimes they come in at one time <coughs> and then five years later the other one comes in. They come in together. Correct. It's very unique. So we've got a chance to put this application on it. Um, yeah, okay. Let me, let me see. If, let me uh, try to talk my way through it. Maybe I can understand a little bit better. I think what Paul is saying, and I think what you guys are maybe getting at, and certainly what Tom is getting at, is that implicit here is the understanding that we'll have a joint control of the space in between, the concrete in between. Um, you're One of the two of you can't very well then tomorrow after all this is done, come back and say, screw this, I didn't like this idea. I'm going to put a fence up right here and we can see where the line is. That you guys are kind of forfeiting that right to do that now. And you're also, as Paul is pointing out, forfeiting the right of your future, um, whoever may own your property in the future. And so that has to be understood, and I guess I'm kind of slow to pick this up, and now I think I'm getting it, is that there has to be... Um, some sort of agreement that perhaps can be attached to the deeds in the city office that explains that no, we've kind of forfeited that right. This is a jointly owned piece of property at this point. Pretty much. Yeah. And if you guys understand it that way and can come to some conclusion, Paul can perhaps provide some guidance in the planning office. And that's, I think, what Mr. Babcock has put as his condition. I'll just say, just because I want to make sure why, no no disrespect, whatever, I'm going to vote no against this. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that everybody's going to vote that way. I just want you guys to know it just, it's it's convoluting a process and a problem. Um, I get what you guys are trying to do, um, but I think it's going to long-term create more problems um, than what it is. And I just want you guys to know why I'm voting the way I'm doing, just so you guys know. Okay, we have a. I think it's been seconded. It's been seconded by, yeah, proposed by Mr. Babcock, seconded by Mr. Hoy, with the condition that Mr. Babcock put on, uh, basically to approve the variances before us for item six and seven. Now, I would like to have a separate vote for each one, since these gentlemen went to the difficulty of having uh, two separate applications. 
So let me go f uh, with Mr. Loke first, item number six at 1315. He's proposing to put in concrete that goes up to the property line. We have a motion made with the conditions uh, off, um, offered by Mr. Babcock. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 You're good there. 1350. You did not say aye, but we have a three to one vote on 1350. Perfect. Just want to make sure that's yep. so I'm, I'm a nay. But it still passed. Yep, so you ex just express your vote for Yes. yes. Okay. I wanted to make sure it was on the Okay. So we have the next one we have is item number 7, 1307 Oregon Street, Mr. Huff. Um, the same, we'll assume Mr. Babcock's motion, Mr. Hoy's uh, second applies to this as well. All in favor? Aye. 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 Nay. Three to one. You have your variance with the condition that was, we've all tried to explain. Thank you, Can you stop making comments like that? It's just not necessary. It's ridiculous. Gentlemen, make sure to stop in if you have questions. Because we need a permit oh. to do this. So yep. Right so down here. Just permit, so yeah, we can talk about the easement stuff. We can do that. Right here as we're coming from Sir, we'll, yeah. we'll uh, if you can't continue we'll probably need to sort of legal sit quietly, we'll, 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 we'll ask okay. to uh, uh, direct you. Okay, yeah, yeah, or direct, yeah. yeah. You understand Perfect. what I'm right. saying? Thank you. Very good. Go on with number eight. The Oakland Avenue property. Good afternoon, yes, sir. Mr. Sordo. Yes, my name is Osmin Sordo, and I purchased this property back in 2005. Um, and he didn't have a garage, but he did have a storage shed on the right corner. You can see it right there. Um, uh, when I purchased the property, uh, the old shed, it was the concrete, it was pretty much um, level, it was cracking. Um, so the years went by and this year I decided to rebuild it. Um, pretty much um, I tore it down and I rebuilt it using the old material, the good old material. Um, I do have pictures for you to see. This is the old material that, the good old material that I use on that property. Um, now, the property line, I don't know if he got the, the picture. Actually, it's this picture. The reason, this is a small property. And the reason it got smaller is because my neighbor, the property line is not actually, this is the property line, but my neighbor, he uses, this is something that he doesn't have to do with you, this is something that I gotta get a survey and yeah. get it figured it out. But my neighbor, he uses part of my property. Here is my house, and here is, that's a camper. This is my house, this is a camper and vehicles that he has on this side of my property. So based on this, the property is getting a smaller in the back and me not having a uh, garage and having a large family, it make it hard for me to keep uh, things around the house organized and teach my family how to be organized. So I'm asking for, uh, for the parents just to keep my, my shed. Uh, the problem is that the shed is already built, I'm being honest with you. And this is something that I shouldn't check before with a professional because I check with friends. And they told me, well, the, the shed is already there. So I don't think you're gonna, get, you're gonna get in trouble. I mean, making it prettier. Um, I've never been in this type of situation before, so. So the issue, Paul, is that he's put up uh, a larger structure. Oh no, he's got a he's got a variance problem. Side yard setback, back rear yard. Setback. I guess rear yard setback. And then technically, the side wall heights are larger than we accept under the code. Ah, okay. 
pretty much the the old structure it was a large and tall that was the reason why I pretty much I tore down the old one and I made the new one right in the same space um, but that's the new one that's the new one the one in the back okay and it's not completed I stop it immediately after after you guys told me what needs to be done yet well I'm still gonna see if you look on the left side on mm -hmm. the left side of the overhang there is no there is no siding there okay and on the back part of the shed there is also some some uh, siding missing okay that hopefully I get the variance and I'll yeah. complete it nothing with this additional structure and it's no. just no okay was the old shed the same height it was the same it was the same height 16 that's a 16 16 that's a, a 12 wide by 16 and 16. Okay. So your argument to us is that you've got a smaller lot than it even looks like because for whatever reason you've got your neighbor is impinging on the property. But your main argument is that you've, you're, you've essentially rebuilt your shed from what was there before. Correct. The old one was falling down, this one isn't, looks nicer. Uh, but in every other sense, it's the same size, same footprint, same height, right? Yeah. Okay. So it's exactly the same as the other one? It was the same. Except for better material. Well, if you look on the left side, see, what I did, I used the old good material. And because if you see the face, the face of the building, I got brown new material. But on the size, because it's, you know, it's against the trees, mm -hmm. I got the good old material of the old structure. Mm -hmm. So pretty much just, um, that's the way I build it. So, but the relevant argument, at least regarding my decision, is that you've got, you put this new shed, reconstructed shed in the same footprint as the old. Correct, yes. And so if, if the casual user, neighbor, or whatever looked at this, they would think it were, you know, you just fixed up your shed, but nothing Correct. else had changed. Correct, yes. Questions? Did you talk to your neighbors about it? Yes. <coughs> They're okay. Um, I got pretty much on the back of the shed. It's hard to know who my neighbors are because that's a rental properties. There's people coming in and out, huge, uh, huge properties in and out over time. So, but the, uh, the, my neighbors in the front of the house, they're all okay. They're all fine. Now you also own sort of the, the property on this side? Yes. Okay. Yes. So, yes, the 418, yep. that's a property under my name, yep. too. So I got both properties. I don't want to take up everybody's time, but I'm sure everybody's curious. How did this end up where this guy has a driveway in your property? Well, you know, I believe this is coming from a while back, years ago, I think. Um, I have never seen this. Is this is this something that is more common than I thought, Paul? Yes. Oh. I think <laughs> here, here is what I believe. No. Excuse me. Sure. I think that these lines over here, these lines, Yeah. What? and that's exactly what happened in my property. Is uh, that what that means, Paul? The double board, lines board. mean that... We're not real sure. There are some areas of the city that are so old that the lines maybe aren't accurate in the public record system. Mm -hmm. So sometimes they may have to rely on a survey to get to that better accuracy. That's exactly what that's exactly what I'm planning to do once once I get all figured it out. But I mean, having a small size property and even with this type of things, then you make it even smaller for me. But I yeah. know that I can get it back legally. Um, but this, like I said, this is something that I gotta do down the road myself. You better serve here. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I think we have an understanding of what you're proposing, so we'll think about it here. Thank you. Uh, can I take my picture? Oh, oh. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yes, you may. And then I think I gave you a. It's like, oh, here it is. Here you go. 
<laughs> All right. I don't have problems with this for the reasons that I kind of yeah. So. I agree. It's a very interesting property. The more that's as interesting as anything I've seen. It's completely over on its own. He knew that when he bought it. So it doesn't affect what whether we have a variance or not. It's so funny because it's kind of like the last thing we're considering, you know? Is that a driveway was approved. Anyway, irrelevant for this case, but it just reminds me of the last one, you know? It's true. All right, a motion would be in order. I motion to approve the variance um, as requested. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made by Mr. Everman, seconded by Mr. Babcock to approve uh, the variance requested for the 422 North Oakland property. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 You're good, 4 0. Next is item number nine. We have um, Mr. Bukovich and Mr. Fisher. So, which one is which? I'm Rick Fisher. You're Rick Fisher. Who's Mr. Bukovich? Right here. Are you here to speak for, against, uh, as interests may appear? I'm, I'm for it. He's working for me, I guess. All right. I got it. Okay. Oh. Just want to make it clear. Yeah. All right, Mr. Fisher, can you explain the situation on why the variance is this? Sure. Um, this is a um, house on Shadow Lane. It's uh, across the street from Lambeau Field. It's uh, one, of the, one of the Excuse original. Excuse me. Could you ask the gentleman to shut off his phone for I can hear you talking, please? Uh, sir, do you have your phone on? He was talking, listening to that. Uh, I was just listening to it was, the was doctor interfering with appointment. Me. Thank All you. All right, very good. Um, so this is a existing home, uh, existing structures, one of the original 1960s constructed homes in good shape. It has a single stall driveway with a single stall garage. It's double deep. It's built. The garage was reconstructed. I'm not sure when it's in the last 15 years or so. It meets all the current green space requirements, um, all the setback requirements. What uh, what we were requesting was that we would be able to um, add an overhang to the side of the garage to cover the sidewalk. Um, what's a, I guess they're, we're trying to do is keep the snow and rain and everything from blowing in the garage doors when the garage doors are open. Um, this is, you know, the neighborhood where they're rebuilding all those big, you know, houses and things. And, I joked about we should just tear it all down and rebuild it and they said absolutely not. We want to keep it. I, and I guess the the thing I would think is that if you have doors to attend that open, you'd face them in a different orientation. So, you know, if this was constructed new, we design appropriately and and uh, so what we're proposing is just to cover extend the overhang on the on the building the same way the house is to keep the snow and rain and things from blowing in the garage. There's already uh, we would be covering that sidewalk. So what's the variance that's needed here? The first accessory structure um, is a thousand square feet. They're just going over that limit because of the overhang. Right. We consider an expansion of the structure. Structure. Okay. Doesn't have. The closure necessary, but the roof line itself is expanding out and closing that space. We, we view it as an expansion of the accessory structure. Even if there's nothing underneath, and you're not going walls. So it's not, you know, we're not increasing the use or the, you know, usable inside surface of the garage or anything or storage capabilities. We're just trying to keep the snow and rain and everything else out of the garage and, you know, off the sidewalk like it is on the back of the house as well. So it would be constructed in the same manner and the same appearance. It's strictly the footprint has gotten bigger. It's just they haven't closed the, the building in. It's just it's physically gotten bigger. Without me having to do the math, do we know what the overage is if, with the existing? I can look at it right here and do it. 200, 277 square feet. Would it be over the 1,000 limit? Um, I guess we would now include the overhang, which is not currently in the overhang. So it would be another... another 50, so it's 2 times 47. 
So it'd be 300 feet over, roughly. Okay. So, in that. so this is not for vehicles, this is for people. Correct, yeah. And, and originally when I went to, I, it's been a long, longer story. I'm involved as an architect because of the structure involved. And um, I went to the inspection department. They thought it was fine. I didn't need a variance, and then further review. <laughs> you know, so then I quick took some measurements because I know you know I know I know that this area is being scrutinized based on you know stormwater management and all of those things. So we're not changing any of the surface. We're not changing any of the stormwater. We're not changing any of the green space or anything. We're just covering our sidewalk. I know where you're going, Tom. I I don't know if really impacts our decision or not. Did you care to say something, sir? Is this a Packer game party hosting garage more than a storage garage? Anyone Maybe, yeah. We're not... I mean, you drive by Lombardi, you see all the houses that are fixing them all up for rentals and parties, and that's obviously not all them garage doors are not there for pulling in vehicles. We're to open it up for a party. It's not a storage area, it's a party area. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I don't have a any way to object to that? No, it's not described from this person as that. As well, we view it as an accessory. Reading, huh? We view it as an accessory use. Pardon? It's viewed as an accessory use. Whether you park cars in there or put your lawnmower in there, they're going to pull or a car in the backyard. I've been at parties in garages before, so yeah, it doesn't. Yeah. It, you know, we don't regulate that particular type of use. The variance is simply for the size, yeah. exceeding the size limitation. If the use was an issue, it wouldn't be before us anyway, right. before be before something else. So. Well, I think I understand why what you want to do and I, whether I, whether I, my reason for why you want to do it is what you, what you say doesn't really matter because you, I think your reasoning is fine. I don't have an objection to this, but I'm getting into the discussion. Do you guys have any questions? <coughs> Sir, if you can have a seat, we'll think about it. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Could we uh, show the other picture? You can see the football. Uh, if you look at the landscaping, it's pretty well done. He's got a flagpole there. Uh, the fact that he's got an architect uh, weighing in on the work. Uh, that is Lombardi Avenue. It is, yeah. And it faces this lines right up with the ticket office. <laughs> yeah, I, I, we know what it is, and, and at the same time, I don't think that is, uh, we're here to make any decisions regarding the use. The use, use right. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Welcome to Lambeau Field. I live in the neighborhood. Yeah, I know. You're just down the road. Welcome to Lambeau. <laughs> Pretty cool. So I, the only question I have, and I'm actually seeking your guys' opinion, right, is since I'm newer, are, is this a hardship, right? Isn't the point to grant variances for a hardship? Is that my understanding of what? Every case should be based on a hardship, yes. I have not heard a hardship yet, except for it seems more of a convenience decision. It's that's, convenience. That's the hard part for me. Mr. Right. Hoy is finding item number three or four of the <laughs> instructions we have from the from yeah. the city. And would you care to read that, Tom? It's on the second page. You talk on this page. Mm -hmm. Well, I was looking here. Oh. Preservation of intent, exceptional circumstances. If if you if you've seen what the ordinance says, Tommy, it's there's uh, something on the on. third page that if you haven't gotten there yet, that puts us in the bind. On the screen. Puts us in the bind that we're in. The preservation of property rights: the variance is necessary. The preservation and enjoyment of the same substantial property rights which are possessed by other properties in the same district and vicinity. Oh. This is the one that catches us. This is the one that is not normally included in variance uh, decisions. Got it. It's also true that we have four or five lists, 
things listed here and it's not clear if we need to find all five or just one of the it. five or the majority of the five. So this is why we're here. Yeah. If we're easy, Paul will do it all, right? That's right. You don't have to come. Yeah. So uh, I get your point, but that's... Number three is... It's not ruling. It's just one of five. And no, so yeah. Preservation of intent and other things, but... Hmm. Um, that's good. Thank you. So what do you guys think? Is, I mean, are we ready to vote, or we made up our minds? I'm ready. I think that uh, we want to look at the area that it's in. That I think uh, you make allowances for what the Toronto neighborhood is, and if that's what's going on, then why, who am I to deny a property owner who pays taxes? And not only that, he's a good property owner. Yeah. He's got an architect involved. Yeah. He's got professional landscaping involved. Well, and it's not like it's the building itself is getting bigger. It's, it's, just creating it's reasonable. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Remember, we're not here to we're not here to get a majority. We're not here to necessarily all agree. Yeah. Like we it's great if we don't. But you know, we have to we have, each have to have our in our own minds the reason why we're gonna vote yes or no. Yeah, and that was very helpful for me. I, I'm good. Based on seeing that, the motion is in order. A motion to approve it as uh, the variance as requested. Oh, second. Okay, Mr. Everman has moved that we uh, made a motion that we approve the variance requested for the, uh, the uh, Shady Lane property at 1245. Shadow. 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 Shady. Yeah. Okay, Mr. Everman has made. Uh, Made the motion, and uh, Mr. Hoy a second. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 I heard four zero. You're good. Thank you. Thank you. I'll go over to party. Party. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Next one is Mr. Yeager on Edgewood Drive. Um, I have a couple of things here. Um, I have a petition signed by some of our neighbors um, in saying basically that they have no issue with the vehicle in the area. Um, my husband works for um, a contractor outside of um, Time Warner Spectrum. Um, he was for Rapid Solutions. He's been there for four years, five, five years. Um, and just recently, we, it's become a problem that his uh, bucket truck is parked in the area. Um, I do kind of see somewhat of if there was complaints coming through, um, he was parking it on the road a lot. Um, unfortunately, I know that that could come annoying on the road. It can be you know in the way a lot. It's a larger vehicle. Um, we do oppose you know that if this is approved, we will always have the vehicle in the driveway, um, no on the road at all whatsoever. Um, if he does need to, um, you know, we don't need it in the driveway, he'll leave it at work at that point or something. Um, he does have this job because of the fact that we do not have a secondary vehicle. Um, he uses this vehicle for work. Um, he does go to work at sometimes midnight, two, three in the morning. Um, so access to this vehicle is very vital for his job. Um, he also is on call um, sometimes during the week. So again, he get, if a telephone pole goes down, storm hits and trees get knocked down on wires, he has so long to respond to these calls. Um, if he were to use a secondary vehicle and have to drive all the way to work to get this vehicle, his bucket truck, which is his main tool for his job, um, it will take a long extra time for his job. Um, it's located in De Pere. Where is it located? Commerce Drive. Commerce Drive. Okay, so um, and we're located on Edgewood Drive. So it's a good hike to get all the way there. So mm -hmm. unfortunately, it, um, it does take a long time. Um, he does need to get home to two young children when I'm at work. Um, and that would put another damper in him getting home. Um, mm -hmm. He would have to take even longer to get there. Um, we have, when we did move into the property, our landlord um, was very okay with knowing that it was going to be in the driveway. This is a written letter signed from him saying he has absolutely no problem. He was not aware that um, the vehicle, you know, was 
uh, in cold or not in cold. Um, these are pictures of the vehicle in the driveway. Um, it does not go on the grass. It does not block the sidewalk. Um, I mean, I have pictures that's showing the sidewalk. This is showing that it's not on the grass at all. With still plenty of room on the other side. I mean, we have a minivan that we get um, alongside it as well. I, I did once have it over the grass line, like like yeah. a quarter of an inch, and it was called in like snap of a finger. Yeah, but I didn't even we didn't realize even know it was there. over that I'm far, and I didn't know time. there was something um, on that. We have had um, community service officers come out to the house, like. Um, I mean, it didn't. It wasn't until like after a year we were living here that all of a sudden it was becoming a problem. Um, and the community service officers themselves would come up and say, "I'm not sure what we're here for." That we got a call about a vehicle on the lawn, and we said we, they would look down at the tires and see that it was not on the grass, um, and they would say, "Oh, um, everything's fine to us. We okay." And now all of a sudden we're getting this form from the city that we're not allowed to be here. Um, it's over the 10,000 10, um, pound um, weight limit. Um, basically what it comes down to is, I mean, it's basically like your standard, you know, Ford truck, but it has a bucket on it. I mean, it just weighs well, a little I, bit more. And I did, I did talk to the inspector about this because I wanted to make it clear if it was an issue that he come out to my property and look at it. I called him and talked to him and said, can you come out and look at it and tell me if there's a problem with my truck here? And he said there's. He's like, no, and then all of a sudden he changed his mind like a month later. Yeah. Okay. But he did, he did say, he's like, you know, there's no problem with it. I mean, I've had people that live in the neighborhood over 15 years and never had a problem with the bucket truck in that neighborhood. I want to make sure that Mr. Seymour understands we are going to get to him. I also want to hear from Alderman Nicholson. I appreciate him being here. Uh, but my first request is for Paul. My first question is for Paul. This is an unusual variance request for this board to consider. Mm -hmm. um, it's a dimensional issue. So the, the, the 10,000 pounds you mean? Yep. Okay. Right. Gross vehicle weight cannot exceed 10,000. It's, it's like a domestic vehicle is less, a commercial vehicle would be more. So this is falling into the commercial vehicle realm and it exceeds that uh, requirement. Okay. So for what, whatever the reason, whether it was a complaint or somebody just happened to be driving by or whatever, um, the city was, was asked to look into this and, and the applicants were made aware of the fact they needed to get some sort of relief or understanding and that's what this process is. Yeah, there was no other recourse for them to take. It, it was a dimensional issue, so we felt that this was appropriate for the board. Okay, that explains that. So we yes. just wanted to fight it because, um, like, my, I bring up an example. I, I was out of work on Thursday, and I was out at 5 in the morning in Marinette, came back to Green Bay, worked till 6.30, went home, got fell asleep at 7.30, and had a night cut back out at 10 o'clock. So I had to leave at 10 o'clock at night and go back out and go all the way to Surgeon Bay. So I worked. I work for Comcast, Charter, and Spectrum. Mm -hmm. So I work all over Wisconsin. You know, some weeks I'm gone for weeks, and you know, it's I, the truck's only there from probably 7:30 until if I go out night cuts or anything. You know, depending on situations, especially in like winter and stuff when drunk drivers hit poles and stuff. You know, I gotta get out and respond to it. It's just so. So the issue, Paul, is that it. it if a vehicle weighs over 10,000 pounds, it's not allowed to be parked in a residential area? Correct. Okay. So this has nothing to do with the bucket. We're talking truck weight here. Gross vehicle weight. So how, how much are we over here? Yeah, a F-450 should be well, in the 8,000 pound gro range. The gross vehicle weight is what kills me because my title says 16,000. That's not what the truck weighs. That's how much the load oh, can handle. Yeah. But your, I'd, I'd your have to go pay for it. Your boss guesstimated, and he say around 10,000? So it's in that area. It's about yeah. 10, 11,000 right yeah. there. Okay. With a bucket and all of the materials that yes. you have on there, I can understand yeah. where it's going to be. Let's, let's assume, let's stipulate for the purposes of our discussion that that's I'm, issue. And one thing I'm, I'm just confused about is, is that it says in the variance that it's only commercial vehicles. Well, there's, you know, trailers like campers and stuff and they how much do those weigh because those things got to weigh more than the truck. Paul, Paul what's the policy behind it? I just do don't understand. Know the, just to limit the amount of commercial vehicles that are in a residential area. 
And there has to be okay. a delineation, a cutoff point, and that's the threshold that, that's been used traditionally. Okay. He raises a good point, though. I mean, maybe that's the type of thing we have to consider, is that certainly there's RVs that are parked in, in one line neighborhood that are probably well in excess of that. Yeah, and I have pictures on my phone of, you know, boats that are longer than his vehicle is and an RV that's in the neighborhood that is, you know, around the same weight that just moved in and they don't have any, yeah. no one's complained about them and um, we almost kind of somewhat feel like we're being targeted. Okay, I think I understand your point, but I want to get to the next, Mr. Seymour, okay. you, you are here to talk about this very nice uh, Now is your chance to speak. Well, it's as simple as everything else. There's laws are made for a simple reason. If everybody, if every plumber, plumbers get called out 24 hours a day, Sinclair Plumbing, Rich Sinclair, being a con past contractor, he he's on call 24 7. A lot of contractors in it. Plumbing, electrical, doesn't make any difference. Well, on call, if everybody took their work vehicles home, what we got in the city? That's why we, again, that's why we have laws and ordinances to protect our properties. This is a rental property. We're all homeowners paying taxes for 25, 30, 40, 50 years in that area. And now somebody moves in and says they moved too far from work, so they have to take their work truck home with them. We just got rid of three buses in the neighborhood. They were parking buses. I got pictures. Edgewood looks like a, a parking lot. They're parked all the way to the street and on the street every night. Starting to get cleaned up now because all the police and everybody are starting to come in. But Edgewood is turning into a complete parking lot. Now, there's been times when this vehicle's been there and there's a spool of wire, big wire spool, on a trailer, parked in the front yard, trucks in the driveway, there's weekends, the tr they want to use their yard for entertaining, so they take the truck and they pull it over on Heather Road or Edgewood and they put up orange pylons all the way up around it obstructing traffic over the weekend so they can use their yard so so the gentleman doesn't have to drive to work like everybody else does when 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 green maids sent the paperwork over to them to get rid of that truck out of the driveway because it's against violation of code now he's driving an s10 back and forth to work with the same company name on it he made different arrangements to get back and forth to work so he doesn't have to take that company vehicle, he can take another one. Maybe he doesn't have a vehicle to drive back and forth to work, and that's why he's using a company truck. Does he have a vehicle of his own that he can get back and forth to work with every day? Probably not, because all of a sudden he's driving an S10. Then the city gives him a chance again to drive his work vehicle home, and all of a sudden the S10 is gone, now we got this big vehicle in the driveway again. It, it, and it's there all weekend, every night, every day, in the afternoon. It's an eyesore. If everybody, if we allowed him back in there, now we're gonna have three more buses in the neighborhood, and everybody else brings their work vehicles home with them, what's it gonna look like? That's a rental area. If you want, if you're having an issue with having to drive too far from work, why would you just move into this area recently? Why wouldn't you move closer to work? So you can get to your vehicle in five minutes and get to work if it's such an emergency. Why do you gotta live in this area, if, 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 if getting your work vehicle and getting to work or getting on a job is important, then why, you're renting, you don't own a house, why wouldn't you rent some property closer to where you live? So you can, you just can't decide you're gonna move into a residential area and start bringing utility vehicles and everything else in and parking trailers in the front yard and blocking off the street on the weekend. Heather Road, you go to turn around the corner, they have all parking on this side. That guy's got his vehicle there, and there's pylons all around. You cannot fit two cars between there because he doesn't want to junk up his front yard. He parks it over on Heather Road. Yeah, okay. I, I, all right? I hear your That's point. not right. Your Laws point. are made your point, for a reason. I hear your point. Speeding, everything else. Mr. Alderman, would you care Thank to Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Question for the, uh, um, the gentleman that's uh, requesting the variance. Did you do any work on Heather? Did you do any uh, type of work on Heather Road? Uh, like physical work, you know, like okay. I, I did at approximately seven o'clock at night during the week or seven thirty, between seven, seven, seven thirty. Uh, I've never seen no. Okay. I, I did notice 
the utility truck on the corner. It was between 7 and 7.30 during the week. I don't have the day. It was a couple of weeks ago um, with cones. And yeah, I don't understand. That I don't understand. If the person is doing work there, yes, I understand. But just to park it on the street and putting cones, I, I don't see the, I, I don't see how he has the authority to do that. But that's one issue. When I did talk to Tim Meeves, the inspector for the city of Green Bay, he did contact the um, the uh, landlord, and he did ask the landlord what was the hardship. And the landlord stated, and this is what Tim told me, he's a good tenant. That was it. That was the hardship. That's what Tim Eves told me. Tim Eves also said, I asked his opinion, if we allow this to happen, are, do you feel that we would have more vehicles coming into the city of Green Bay over the weight limit? He said, Andy, you'd be opening up a can of worms. Now, Mr. Seymour is right. We have three buses that were removed from Edgewood that were illegally there for years. And it was my fault because I didn't know there was a weight limit until Tim Eves told me. And then I said, well, what about that utility truck down there? Well, let's take a look at it. And he said, it's overweight. It doesn't belong here. And I'm like, well, then it has to be moved. Um, Edgewood is turning into a parking lot. They have utilized over, over the years, expanding their driveways where they barely have any front grass and the driveways go right up to the front door and they use it for more parking. Basically the same thing that happened last month over on Abrams with that request. I'm trying to stop that, I'm trying to stop, I'm trying to have some uniformity um, throughout the neighborhood. Um, I just feel we allow this, there's gonna be more trucks coming through that are gonna be overweight in the city limits and we're trying to protect the city with this ordinance. So I guess, gentlemen, I am I'm against this uh, variance because of those reasons. Thank you very much. And I did have one neighbor across the street that called me, said he was she was against it. It was the landlord across the street. So I don't know about the petition. It, I mean, I don't know how many residents can signed it. The Pardon? Can I see it? The tenants across are the they street all? Did I mean, basically, are they? They're not all on Edgewood. Yeah, all on Edgewood. Okay. They're not. Um, can I? Yeah. Okay. Um, we do have okay. a couple of things. Um, the vehicle on the road on Heather a couple times. Um, my husband um, parked it on the road. Um, we had my son's first birthday party, um, so we just put it out of the driveway. And when we did receive, I think, was it that day that we should receive? No, no, it was the rummage sale. We had a rummage sale the week before, um, and that's when we got the complaint that, um, it could not be there um and so right away we moved it and put it right in the driveway um and it's always been there ever since so it's never been parked on the road he immediately comes home and parks it right in the driveway um the cones on the side of it that is his works policy um that he have the safety cones around the vehicle um just because it is a larger vehicle um just to make sure you know people are aware that it's there i believe um, um that is just his policy for work that is why it he does that doesn't matter if i'm in my own yard i gotta put cones, he out, puts the cones out there it's, it's just a safety um so i mean like like i said i mean the, the vehicle being on heather was on there maybe twice um, and then also the other vehicle the gentleman was talking about, um, he does have problems with this vehicle sometimes, so it does go to the shop and therefore his work loans him another vehicle to bring home because we do not have access to another vehicle to get him home. So he, he takes that vehicle in temporary it while it's fixing. Logo's on um, so it's, I mean, it's solutions. the same, same thing, it's just not as heavy. So. Um, and that, that is why if he it. sometimes has that. But I mean, this is his main, This he utilizes this vehicle for work. I mean, this is the main thing he uses for work, his main tool. He needs it for work. If they, it's an eyesore for like weekends, I mean, they can loan me a vehicle to use, but he, they can't sign me two vehicles to my name. That is one and thing we're proposing leaders, too, so. is that, you know. Yeah, what, that was my question yeah. is, what, what is the condition of your employment regarding this vehicle? Well, if we deny the variance, are you telling me that you don't employ? Well, it's going to create a big hardship on me 
I mean, we would. I can't afford a second vehicle. We definitely can't. Yeah, and we definitely I, can't get a second vehicle. And I work nights. I go. I mean, we can't afford to um, not have me work. So I work three to you know however late at night. And so he gets home to take care of our children and relieve my mom who babysits. And you know he he she goes home or whatever. And you know he he if he's going to you know someone's got to go pick him up. Then you know that's kids we have to drag out at night or if he gets called out in the middle of the night or something like that. I mean, I need a vehicle for my children in case something happened in the middle of the night they need to go to the hospital or something. I mean, he, we, I would have to bring him to work every night in the middle of the night if he had to go, um, mm -hmm. if he didn't have this vehicle. Um, I mean, we, we are willing to make adjustments. I, I mean, on the weekends, if if he you don't want it there on the weekends absolutely friday nights um friday you know sometimes he is done early we'll leave it at the office and we'll just have to um you know get him to work either monday morning he can carpool with somebody or something or um sunday night i bring him and he picks up his truck um it's so it's not there on the weekends um and even if i mean our hope is to please let us keep it there but even if we're not allowed to um, and we have to figure out a different way to go about things on the nights that he is on call that I mean he'll he'll be on call one week out of the month um, either they do it it's weirdly it's not very often um, when he's on call I mean allow us to have it there or um, if he knows he has a night cut um, usually once a week he has a night cut I mean allow him to have it there at those nights because then he has to wake up an extra hour early just to get ready, go all the way out to work. And again, we've had this vehicle for four years and we've lived in Green Bay area and never had a problem until now. We previously and lived on Howard Street. And I mean, well, for one thing, I just want to throw us out there because the reason I can't move closer to work is because I don't have great credit. And my landlord was nice enough, you know, and he gave us a chance and, it's and expensive we, in Depeer. You know, we made it into this place it's not like you can just go into Pier and you know with bad credit and just go hey can I come in here they mm -hmm. they do credit checks and my landlord mm -hmm. didn't let us gave us a chance it's not that I that I want to be this far away from where I work it's that well, that's our just family. where our I family, have our family lives in that area so that's to. absolutely we, I mean our family is in the area we have to get out where we were because gunshots behind our house and stuff yeah, we, we lived in a bad area like right before away. until we moved to this area and so it's you know it's like <clears> we finally get somewhere we really like and everything's going good and then here we go we got another you know something else is going on I mean we're planning to have our kids go to school at Wilder and everything I mean we like the area we live in um, our neighbors are absolutely wonderful uh, all around us. I mean, they we didn't find one person that had a problem with the vehicle. What, uh, what are the financial implications for them to be parking the truck on the driveway? Do they get to I can't hear you. So what are the financial implications of their situation? That was the question. I think they're under orders right now from Inspector Meeves. I don't know if they were given, um, they were given a deadline, but I think that the ability to come to the board and ask for variance first, if that fails, they'll have to revisit that with the inspector, maybe another two weeks, another month or something to get it removed for compliance. If it's not removed, it would be an enforcement issue, it could be citations issued at that point. So at this point, they're not being uh, financially penalized for parking? No, I, I think it's simply under orders and they appealed the order, so to speak, to come to the board to hear your opinion first. So what's our lead time before they start to be financially penalized? It's difficult to say. It, it's somewhat up to the inspector to you know, determine that with the applicant. Um, it could be before September 1st, I guess I'm thinking. September 1st? Yeah, if, 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 I'm just generally speaking, if nothing was done, <coughs> there's a window where they, they need to comply. If they don't comply, citations would go out. But again, that's a, a large window that <coughs> I'm putting out there. Hey, you probably thought of this, okay? I can't hear you again. Listen what? up, then. What? Listen up. Listen Come on, sit up. up here. Have a seat. We're doing the best we can, man. Just can you take a breath? 
I am taking a breath. Uh, you're making I this way more. Hear what's going on. making it way more difficult. Gentlemen, the inspector can give any type of date. Jeez. Okay. At his discretion. When I drove in your neighborhood, you're not that far from Shopko. Have you given any thought to approaching the owners of like the? Uh, we have thought about that. Um, his work did um, say that they're not too fond of the idea due to the fact that there is very expensive tools in his vehicle. Um, they're yeah. worried about it being unsupervised at night, um, where it could get broken into and things get stolen. Um, they weren't very happy with the idea I because there is um uh, the yeah there he does keep stuff in the back and. and Side thing, side bins. Um, we thought about there's a place by A and W where also commercial vehicles park their vehicles right there. Um, and we talked to his boss about it, and he wasn't too fond of the idea. So that's why we're here. Unfortunately, he had an S10. Did you you need to be quiet. Yes, please. We're. I have a hand up. You're we out of order. didn't get called. No. You're out of order. Well, I'll wait then. The S10 is a Ford Ranger, and it is provided from my work. And it has it's cl clearly labeled with broadband solutions on it. It has a little ladder rack on it, and it says 135 on the back. It is a work vehicle. I don't own any don't other own vehicle. Any other vehicle. It's than just a a, it's just an other vehicle that they use for their, you know, if this is in the shop that he can transport to and from the shop even, or the the shop people come and get him because we don't have another vehicle. We they go to Auto Select right down the road, so. I mean, um, that's the only reason why he has that vehicle. Um, I mean, they want him to have this vehicle because he does need this vehicle for work. The S10 will not do anything for him. So the, the S10 option, if we can call it that, is, is something that is not available to you on a routine basis where you can... Not necessarily. Basically, your, work, your employer is not going to provide you with drive to, to work. You'd have to get another vehicle. Yeah, and that's dealt with being around in so many different places like Marinette and I've been in like Lancaster and like, you know, Madison and, you know, I'm all over the place. So sometimes I'm coming home at like 10 o'clock at night and, you know, running all the way over there to get all the way home and I'm, you know, it's just... He's exhausted. He, he works so hard. I mean, I, I so mean this is just... I, I guess I have a question. Maybe the alderman can help me out here. Was the intent of the ordinance to protect the city streets or 10,000 pounds? Is that a heavy vehicle for driveways? I guess I'm... I'm a little confused well, on where that goes. I, I think it goes up to the 150, maybe the 250 range if you're a Ford fan. I think it's kind of a maximum. But, I mean, again, it's a delineation. It has to be some sort of threshold, and I think that's what the ordinance has always been, has been 10,000 pounds. Yeah. Again, something less is a domestic, something more is traditionally commercial. They do overlap a little bit, but 10,000 has been the, the number. In the past, I think the city has dealt with this by having tenants or owners park those vehicles off-site on a commercial lot somewhere, simply put. So this is not a precedent that's been done in the past. It's just that they don't park in a residential area because they're too heavy. They go to a commercial area. And that is why we did get the written letter from our landlord because it is his property, it is his driveway, and it would be you know him at fault if anything was damaged because of the vehicle on the driveway. Right we wanted to make time. sure that you guys were aware that he doesn't eight. care. What? Will you just sit down, please? It's ridiculous. That's where we feel the harassment is coming that. from as well. It's been a little out the, the time that my truck was parked on the side of the road on Heather, I had an officer come out and he said that he had gotten a complaint about an obstruction of traffic, which he told me and he doesn't even know I tell here because it's not really obstructing traffic because I took it off the main road and I parked it far enough off so people can still turn and with my cones, he said there was no problem, but he told me because of the complaint that just get it off as fast as I could on um, that issue. But my fix of it was to never park my truck on the street again. And if I had a, a family thing going on, that I brought a smaller truck home so I could park it on the street or because I can't do I can't do anything with my truck because the second it it does anything, I got somebody at my door already. And it's constant. Like, I mean, 
just constant. Somebody's at my door. I mean, if I'm over grass like this far, it's over. It's only on the grass. I mean, the, the trailers are never on the grass. I park them like underneath my truck, right behind it, and I still have three and we, feet and of clearance. And it's still, it's still sidewalk. never blocking the sidewalk. The vehicle's never been over the sidewalk. We all, like you said, he puts, he backs up the trailer, takes it off, he pushes it himself. These how heavy are these cable reels? I mean, these big, massive cable reels with cable on them because he needs them for work. He pushes them up the driveway just so he can tuck it under the vehicle, just so he's not in the way of anyone. I just try to do what, you know, I mean, hopefully I the right thing. I could understand if we're, you know, throwing trailers on the grass and parking things wherever we wanted to and going over the sidewalk and being partly in the road. I mean, I can understand that, but I mean... How long is your lease? Um, we actually are just signing another lease. For a year? Mm -hmm. <coughs> we plan to stay there. Like I said, my, my children, I have two children. I have a three-year-old boy and a one-year-old. We, we have a three-year-old son and a one-year-old boy, and we want them to go to Wild there. We've established a very good friendship with our neighbors next door. I mean, they're amazing. They have little kids the same age as us. and. We've never had that before. We lived on Howard Street. We had shootings in our backyard. And here we are in a great neighborhood where we love being and we want to stay. And our children are going to go to school at Wilder. I mean, this is where we want to be, but this is, this is where we're at. Could you uh, put the ordinance up on the board if you've got it there? I just had it summarize us. Yeah, I guess I, I'd need, and I don't have my chapter 13 with me on what the general context is of that. I can dig it up, I guess. Mm. Yeah, when you try to look, you can't find it. Do we even know it's over 10,000? That right, that's what the, the inspector sum? had determined, I guess. I'm okay. not sure his method, but. He ran, through, he ran the plate, I believe. Uh -huh. And the plate was registered with the Department of Transportation. Yeah. And can, I, can I make it? Yes. One yes. comment, last comment. That area has been struggling for a number of years. I've been trying to clean it up with parking issues, the trailers, everything. And I'm making some progress. This is not, if you allow this, I mean, I'm, I'm, we're taking a step backwards. I, I am getting feedback from neighbors that live deeper in the neighborhoods that there's, the, not, not only just Mr. Seymour, there's others, that the parking's out of control, there's ruts, there's trailers, there's just uh, the cans, everything. It's, we're finally getting a, a control over it, and I'm just requesting to enforce the ordinance. That's all, that's my comment, thank you. What I want to see is the context of the of the way the ordinance is written. Hmm. Okay. If the S10, just go with me for a second. If the S10 was there and it still had a commercial logo on the side, you wouldn't have a problem. It's not an eyesore to enable it. You can't have a vehicle so large with pylons and crap hanging all over it. A big spool of wire that was parked on the lawn until it got called in. It never was on the lawn. And parking wherever you want, putting pylons out until it gets called in, trying to get away with whichever you can. And the thing is a big boom on it. It's just a big eyesore. We just got rid of three buses. Right. Yeah, we heard that once before. Well, well, that's right. I've heard them repeat well, themselves yeah. about 20 times Mr. over Seymour. their kids and everything Mr. else. Seymour. Did you tell them to be that's so you're just gonna tell me. So that, that would be okay. I was just trying to get to the root of it. So it, right. the eyesore piece is not really the problem in the sense that it's a large truck. Not that it's a commercial well, vehicle for you. It's against the law? No, I I understand I'm trying to I'm trying and to the fact follow that it's your an life. eyesore and a nuisance in the neighborhood. But it, well, answer my question. Eyesore. If it was an S ten and it was under ordinance but it had a commercial logo on the side, you have no problem with it. No. It's the size of the vehicle. It's the size of the vehicle, yes. Okay. The size of the it's ugly. It's it, if everybody brought their work vehicles, the plumbers, and everybody else brought their oversized vehicles home because they have to get up in the middle of the night to fix a pipe, 
Every driveway in Green Bay would have a school buses, plumber trucks, and everything else in it. That's why there's ordinances. We have granted variances for exactly that issue. So 10,000 pounds is the one of the issues. There are other standards here in 1724 that are on the screen. We're back. Taxpayers have been living in that area for 20, 30 years. Yes, please, please, we're thinking. Just as a thought, the landlord pays taxes and they pay the landlord. Bring it down our property value. Okay. It is junk all over the place. I just today had to call the police department twice. You know why? It's moving from Edgewood right down to Aphrodite. Today on Aphrodite, I had a 20 some foot camper in his front lawn. All hooked up with water, steps going on, different. electricity, that's and everything else. Matter. Yeah, we're not we're not trying to get into arguments. It's just it's just one thing after it's just it's it's landsliding like Andy said it's turning into a parking lot that area is turning into a junkyard and it's mostly all rentals and now it's flowing into the residential area and our property values are going to go down if you allow this crap to keep going on most of the time people rent before they buy a home a lot of renters never are ever buy a home mostly they buy a home before they have children You know, we're not here to, we're not here to, we're we don't pay taxes I'm living agreement sir, to take care sir, of everybody else's family. Sir, I'm the chairman. And hardship. And you're out of order. I've heard what I need to hear from you. You can no longer speak. Do you guys have any further discussion for the applicants? No. So you could have a seat. Thank you. Delivery. Sir, if you could have a seat. Yep. Yeah. 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 Is it yours too? Is it? I believe so. That's your landlord. Yeah. Nope. No. Nope. Wrong one. No. Nope. I have my landlord one. <laughs> Thank you. It's so yeah. funny. You, I kept reading this over and over, and I was like, "They're not from the crap." So <laughs> this is not the letter. Would you like to see the right one? <laughs> uh, actually, I would. <laughs> what are you guys' thoughts on this? Thank you. Well, because uh, I can this. Sure. I'm not opposed to it, and I'll tell you why. I, and the, the way I read the intent is to provide some flexibility, um, <coughs> reasonable flexibility. I appreciate what the alderman is saying, but I think we got to look at it as a case by case deal. And uh, I think what they're proposing to do is reasonable under the circumstances given their family dynamics. <coughs> they've got two young children, they've got a vehicle uh, for their mother, uh, and a vehicle. For, for work related purposes and talking about the time where they're going to be uh, having to be called in and so forth. I think it's going to create a big hardship for a young family. Uh, and uh, so I, I would be in, I'd be, I'd be in favor of this under this circumstance. Keeping in mind we don't want to create some sort of precedence and looking at cases on an uh, individual basis as they go forward. But I think I was compelled by what they said today. So, I'd be so that. your your reasoning is that the hardship is significant. Yes, and it's uh, of merit in the argument for the grant. Yes, Tom, I'm kind of leaning towards uh, towards the alderman's perspective uh, because he is a representative of the people. He knows the area. Uh, I'm very sympathetic. Uh, I would consider, you know, we're hearing September 1st before they would enforce. Um, if there is a chance for us perhaps to extend that to October or November, to give them a conditional variance for a shorter period of time so they've got, they know there's been a determination and they can work from that, okay? That was going to be my question. So thank you, real quick, not to cut you off, but I want to make sure we hit that point. Are we allowed to approve a conditional variance for a period of time to give them enough time to try and problem solve, to get a second vehicle or to figure that situation out? Are yes. Yes. Okay. The ordinance is very clear on our directions from the council so we can put qualifications to uh, any variance for grant. Okay. If I could just kind of chime in as well that because they are renters on this property, typically variances run with the property, so you may want to consider some sort of time limit on the variance. 
it's tied to their lease or tied to their occupancy in the building, but it doesn't continue on beyond that. With that right. Year. So if we said until January 1st, then the variance is over, then it would be enforceable by the inspector. I mean, for example, if you want right. to that. Right. right. But you don't want it to run beyond that period. Right. It's not a blanket variance. It's something very specific to this, pro this use, I guess. I didn't mean to. I just wanted to make sure I... Because you brought up a good point, so continue. I mean, that's kind of where I'm going with it. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I can understand their frustration with respect to Mr. Rules of Order here uh, and getting harassed, which can't be pleasant. And I, I don't know that I want to continue to live in a place where I was subjected to that type of harassment. I do understand the gunshots on Howard Street. And I do understand the need for your children to be in a good area that's acceptable to you. And uh, I think you're in a bad spot. And personally, I think it would be in your best interest to find a better locale. So I have something that's what they were saying is they're not going to be able to find a different locale credit. based on their credit. Within less so than one mile from the house at Walmart, right across the street from Walmart. Just listen to me, what? No, for twenty five dollars a month, they can rent the spot to park something, and it's a locked up area. Hey, listen, we for twenty five dollars a month, they can park their vehicle a mile away from home. The chairman has said you're out of order. order. You're not allowed I'm to speak anymore. I'm just giving you a good suggestion. Please so right across from Walmart, twenty five dollars a month, park your vehicle just, there. How about this? We've heard what you said. Why don't you We'll pick up the notes. Can I pay my taxes here longer than you have. I guarantee you have. I'm trying to protect my property 20 true. some years. I'm sympathetic and you are very bad okay. listening. So why don't you go outside and wait it. since you've already been told you can't talk anymore. What are you looking at? Stupid Hey, you said that to the wrong person. You better keep walking. I've lived here my whole life. Ridiculous. Absolutely. I apologize on behalf of the rest of the residents of City of Green Bay. So where I was going with this Jesus. is that, that's exactly what I'm here, I to give them some breathing space. And uh, I can agree with you with respect to, yeah, you know, a bucket truck, that's really visible. I think if you didn't have a bucket on top of it, because I drove the neighborhood and man, there are pickup trucks and boats and RVs, like you say, they're all over the place. The fact that you've got a bucket truck and you're sticking out like a sore thumb, you know. And it's just because we're on that frontage street, though. If we were behind somewhere else, I mean, I'm not throwing anyone under the bus. He has a coworker that I'm not saying lives directly by us, but in the vicinity. And he's worked there longer and lived there longer than us. Never once has he had a problem. Never. And here we are. 15 years. Har harassed all of a sudden. I would entertain a motion that we try and negotiate a, an end date for them to. I wouldn't, I want to second, but I have a couple questions if that's okay now that I feel like I can actually ask. Them. Um, as he said, I have a three year old and one year old. Like, I'm very sympathetic to your situation, working your butt off trying to figure things out, you're renting, bad credit, like you're doing all the right things. So regardless of what we decide, personally, like I get it. And thank you for trying to make your situation work, working two jobs, like my wife and I have been there. Mm -hmm. um, so that part I get. And clearly with certain things, it makes me want to just vote a certain way just because I'm getting frustrated. Mm -hmm. I want to be as objective as possible in this situation and make sure that my heartstrings aren't here, my frustrations aren't here. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, looking at your situation, yes, there's perspectives that you can have with other people not having the same level of scrutiny or detail on their own property, but unfortunately that's the hand you're dealt, right? You have individuals that might be scrutinizing your situation, right? So win-win, win-lose, lose-win, right? That, you, we have to find a compromise, and that's where I'm leaning towards, that's why I'm where Mr. Hoy is. It sounds like you, you can find a solution. It's a financial situation right now that if you're able to find a second vehicle, while it would be difficult, right, because I've done difficult, I drove in California an hour and 20 minutes to work one way. So I missed out a lot of time on my kids, you know, driving there, but that's what I had to do because that's where I, I worked. If you had another vehicle, you could solve the situation, right? But right now you can't, financially. It's just not a situation you can solve for right now. And, uh, and if 
if they would let me. Um, I mean, if it takes to make this matter go away that I have to go and get a different truck during the week, like, every that, like, that's why couple of days, a, a and then when I have thing. night cuts that I literally have to come home, I get two hours of sleep and have to go right back out, that's when I'd like to have my truck. That's why we suggested if we can't keep it there all the time and, you know, whatever, then if we can at least have it there on those occasion nights that Cause that's does have this time. Because that's how I lose. Because you, because you, and then that's what I'm trying to understand as well. If you did, let's cut the work truck. We say no, can't have the work truck there. It's got to park at work. Mm -hmm. You're driving from the east side to where? To Pier. Commerce Drive. I mean, it's it's an hour drive. drive. You're saying no, it's, it's a 20 minute drive, drive, but it's 20 minutes getting there. in there and then getting Switching to where to a different I'm vehicle. Going. Got it. With all my tools, I'd have to put them all in and where I am. Hey, Lauren, do you know anything about this Walmart security lot? That I don't know. I, I would have brought that up as an option, but no, I don't. But, I mean, I'm willing to go to the end of the year so they can find another place. You know, I, I, that's a good compromise. Oh, gosh, that's but still, at the two, same three, time, four, that requires five. a secondary vehicle to get him to that place. Or, um, you know, us having to... You're talking about if it's a Walmart solution. Yeah, if we have, you know, if we park it somewhere else, I mean, we still have to come up to taking him wherever he needs to go. Um, but I think that's, for me, what I'm trying to get at is, for you guys, you're in a tough spot, right? You've got a ton of scrutiny. Like I said, your life, you're trying to rebuild, you're trying to do what's right, you're in a good school area, you're renting from someone that's taking a chance. Like, all the things aside that transpired, like, I think that's great, but at the same time, you have, you kind of have to deal with the cards that you have, you know what I mean? Right. And I think we are granting a variance if we decide to go that way. There, there needs to be steps, ownership on your guys' end to say, hey, this is where it is, mm -hmm. because it, it's, it's not going to go away, your situation. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Based on what I just saw. Uh, so I don't, I'm not going to say move. That's, that's, that's tough. Like so I, even, like, even if we did, agree, like, you guys were agreed to, like, a Monday through Friday type deal, I mean, he, it's only allowed there Monday through Friday. Like, you know, from, I mean, it's gone. He leaves at 6 a.m. in the morning, and it doesn't get back till sometimes, what, 6, 7 o'clock at night. So, I mean, it's not there during the week very often, you know, very much until he comes home at night. Right. And we also said, always in the driveway, never on the road. Always. That's what we've been doing. Yeah. We did have it in the road. He was having it a lot on the road, and that's why I immediately did, told you guys that I think a lot of the complaints was coming from it being in the road, because I myself told him, I'm like, you need to stop parking on the road. It's annoying. Okay. You annoyed Thank you. That. That becomes a nightmare enforcement for us. Yes, right. really know, so. Yep. What days of the week? And right. And then we get a call from whoever, well, and we've got to chase out there. And yeah, someone's so going to be waiting for seven thirty to hit. Right. Now you get someone coming yeah, out. We can't be seconds. everywhere, so just correct. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say that where I would like to, it would second your motion, some sort of whatever that is, and whether we need to say that before we create the motion, but some sort of conditional thing for them to figure it out, say that, the, you know, hey, you have until January 1st to figure out a different situation. Not, like, for the truck. That's kind of where I'm at. Just give them an extended period of time, save up some money, or work with a friend, try and get a second air truck, a second car. Again, my heart, I get it, but I'm trying to be objective, and I think that to me, is, that's... It's a compromise for <laughs> all parties. Yeah. Gives them time to figure out their life, to plan, to try and solve the situation. I, I, I agree with where you're both coming from, but for me, the ordinance is pretty clear. As much as I hate it, I don't think the ordinance would stand up. I'm not here to be that judge. I am certainly amenable to a conditional variance that would allow them to have the situation they have now for a certain period of months yeah. that would then expire. Yep. And, uh, I think that's probably the most equitable way we can get out of this. All vote in favor, because something's better than nothing. So, do we need to come up with a date? 
I think we do. Yeah. I think we got oh yeah. Yeah. Did we come up with that on our own? Yep. Um, we can we can we can put any condition we want. Okay. What what do you think is going to work for you, all? I mean, do you have do you want to offer a date or no? When we ask the residents how long would it take? I mean, there's solutions. But it's July. It's July right now. Mm -hmm. July, or July. Four months. Till five months. Winter. Pardon? Yeah. I mean, we could just winter. go January first. Part of winter, like the start of winter. That would be November, the middle of November. That's the first day of winter. winter. Or towards like December first. Sure. I think I have a first. I think I have a solution for it. I think the city ordinance, I remember seeing signs, they st uh, parking on the roads for snow removal is November 1st. That might be a good date. I think that's, isn't that the date used by the city for for the winter time? For, it might be. I think for, for snow emergency. No, November 1st to April 1st, I think, is the time frame that the city uses for, like, overnight parking. There's, there's issues because of snow removal, oh. and that might be a good date. It might be a reason why we come up with a date. Yeah. It might be as yeah. good as any. Yeah. Uh, whether that's where you folks think is that livable. I mean, there's not great choices here. There's just less bad. Yeah. Anything to give us a stretch to at least try to figure something out. I mean, stuff started going the right way, so I might be able to, you know, try to get something figured out by then. Well, the other part of it too is as a result of the meeting, you can go to your employer and say, okay, we try to negotiate with the Board of Appeals. This is what we've worked out between the Alderman, the Board of Appeals, and the city. I'm trying to work with you guys. Can you guys work with me as far as giving me some sort of an alternate vehicle? Does it give you some leverage as far as being a, a person trying to negotiate a good solution for you and your company? Yeah, and and on weekends I can bring something else on if it helps out. Mm -hmm. So I I I'm I'm perfectly fine with November first. I want to make sure though if we give you guys a date that it's a date that you guys can make work. You know what I mean? This we're giving an out here, an opportunity for you with two kids, a, a job that is grueling. It sounds like try and find a solution that's going to work for everybody so if we just pick November 1st you're like, okay like it has to be a date that you know that gives us time to put away X amount of dollars I mean we can figure car. it out I mean we have family and stuff we could figure it out tomorrow if we had to it's just we were just here to try and see what we could do because of all the okay. trouble it causes but November 1st November 1st November 1st okay I motion to approve the variance request for a conditional time period from today until November 1st of 2017. I'll second. Okay, we have a motion made by Mr. Ehrman, seconded by Mr. Hoy to grant the variance as requested with the condition that it lasts until November 1st. Um, I guess I'll just add some editorial comment that it's not like we're giving you permission to park on the road. We assume that you're going to park in the driveway. Absolutely. Um, no more Heather Street. Yeah. We gotta have. We've got. But what we're granting you the variance for is to park it in your driveway uh, until November first um, as a variance on the ordinance the way it's written. All right. Um, the reason why I would be in favor of this and not in favor of granting the whole variance is because of the explicit wording of the ordinance. Like I said, I don't, I don't like it. I'm not sure if that's the right, if it's secure as far as getting past a judge higher than me, but that's not my, my call. Um, Mr. Everman, I do appreciate all the arguments that he's made. I think they're very good. We do have a lot of sympathy for your situation. I think all four of us do. Um, but at the same time, we've been charged with um, making decisions on variance from ordinances, but not rewrite the ordinance ourselves. And, and my, art, my, my problem and why, I've, why I'm not in favor of granting the, on, on 
an unqualified or a variance is because of the way the ordinance was written. Clearly the intent is to um, screen out and prevent residential neighborhoods from having uh, large unsightly commercial vehicles. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 So the situation is you have till November 1st and then then it's gone. Um, and that's including like any, you know, even if he has like night cut type stuff, we yep. he still can't yep. have it. Right. Yep. Okay. All right. Thank you. To be very frank, I think your employer is taking advantage of you. I want to say thank you for the compromise. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Well, if you could explain it to. Uh, I will. <laughs> right. Thank you. I will. If you can. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, Ms. Newby, I actually stayed because I have a, a question about my approved variance. Sure. I thought about it. Thank Chad, you in your office, send me an email about the approved concrete contractors that can open the driveway opening. So I assume this approval, I have, I have to get one of these contractors to open that part of the driveway where a different contractor is doing the lawn <laughs> is okay, correct? It could be right. It could be one of the same, which would be more beneficial. But right. To open up the apron, you need a license contract. Yeah, which I, I got to list in your office. Right. So that's part of the approval in the permit, correct? Correct. Okay. And Charlie, one. I wouldn't want your job, so I don't want in China. Darn, I was going to say, you, we need yeah, another guy. We need you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? I... It's, we're off the record right now, right? No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, once you get off the record, I'll tell you the story. On. we got to finish our business. Yeah. yeah, I'll just sit here. We, um, I would propose that we defer our election of officers until we have a full quorum of five, or a full complement of five. We put it off this long. I realize it says April, but what do you guys think? <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> I'll, I'll yeah. second the motion. <laughs> well, it's not a motion. It's, I guess we, d we should have a motion. So, yeah. And it should be somebody other than me. When uh, are you thinking would be an optimum time? November 1st. No, next <laughs> next month, I guess. We'll just yeah. keep putting it on. We'll put it back on it. We just know we're not unable to make it tonight. Yeah. So. I make a motion to extend the uh, selection of the officers until the next Board of Appeals meeting. A second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Are you sure the board member? No. Yeah, well, he's are. not here. He's not here. Oh, okay. We can, we can function at three. Okay, so you guys, you're off, you're done, right? We're off the record. So, you guys are all Packer fans, right? Oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. So, that's the clock.